Here, here's, a, here's a very funny man and uh, one half of the most popular twosome on television these days, certainly at least the most popular male twosome on television these days. You know by now I mean Oscar Madison of The Odd Couple. A wonderful actor and a funny one, Jack Klugman. door to one another. Right. Oh, uh, I, well, Florence mulls everyone who comes out yeah, here. I, and I, know. I, usually, I usually can't get that close to Jack because Tony Randall won't let anybody. You wanna, We've got enough problems wanna... going on there anyway. We don't want to go Yes, your that. show's becoming more realistic, too. Yes, right? we have a show where... No, we're not going to go into that. I don't want to touch all that stuff. No, there's never been a hint of uh, any... Can I see uh, if you're really... Ah! Yeah, really? He's a stalker. He's really very good. Why is, why is this the night for people to test the, my stomach muscles? Well, I did it because she, she, she's He's, very honest. Yeah. And if she grabs you and says, wow, then I thought, why not? So you thought you would inject it, too. And wow, it is. Mm -hmm. Very good. If Robert Shaw comes on and sure runs do. off with me at tonight, I don't know what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. Picks you right up and walks out with you. Yeah, I, Zero Mostel once picked me up and used me as a, in some lewd way one time on the show. He could do that with a building. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Say, I've heard that you have cured one of your nasty habits. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm No, I, I, I don't, maybe don't want to talk about no, it. I heard rumors of this. And, and, uh, yeah, somebody... I went to the doctor the other day and he scared me. Uh, by my throat, and uh, oh, yeah? so it's been the three days, and I tell you, it's murder. It's impossible. I I go around like you know sniffing, and, and then I think cigarettes I sneak won't count, you know. If no one sees it. So I'll take a cigarette, like I'll be alone, and I'll go in a room, and I'll say, No, it counts. It counts. Your throat knows, you know. Yeah. And I, boy, but I tell you, it is murder. Don't smoke. It's murder. Yeah. It's quite a quick. You, this is your third day, though, so... my third day, so, so please excuse anything. That's why I grabbed you. I mean, anything. <laughs> I need support anywhere I can get it, so. I resemble a slim cigarette to you, do you? <laughs> I saw it take you off. Yes. I know that is hard. Oh. Uh, I've never had to do it, because I've never really smoked. I, th I can remember in high school carrying cigarettes around for a while when I thought that looked cool, but uh, it didn't um, ever really grab me. I've been that. smoking for over 35 years. Mm. Never less than two packs a day, as high oh. as four. I mean, that's a lot. I'm just, as he said, I'm lucky that I'm able to practice my profession, you know. Did, did your voice begin to get raspy and... Yeah, well, I had laryngitis for a long time, and I went over and he yeah. called it some sort of Luca Plakia or some... <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it scared me, and I just... And I, I must say, I'm very, very glad that he frightened me, because yeah. I, I'm going to beat it this time. I know, I, 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 my dentist uh, stopped a patient from smoking. When the guy just said, how do you do it? And he said, you do it by not putting cigarettes in your mouth and lighting them. And he took his package of cigarettes and crunched them up and threw them away. And he said, I'm going to tell you what those little things inside your mouth mean. And then if you want to continue to smoke, fine. And he punched and, the dentist right in the mouth. Yes. Which is what I would have done. I mean, that would, mind your own business. Only this much of Dr. Rappaport is the original <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony Randall won't let me smoke anyway. Tony now, when he heard that, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. he won't let me get near a cigarette. Well, he wouldn't let you have a cigar on the set because of the smell of it. Uh, he wouldn't let anybody. The whole crew, 40 guys, sneaking cigarettes. I thought, yeah. you know, the whole like, lot. Yeah. None of us on the lot are allowed to smoke. Even in buildings next to Tony no, Randall, you're right. not allowed to smoke? He has that kind of nose, doesn't he? He smokes out. Somebody's smoking a pipe. All right, who's got it? Pipe. And now they start to squeal on one another. It's like Nazi Germany. <laughs> He's the one. He's got it. <laughs> Funny, we, we've been working together 20 years. Yeah, well, Tony get mad, so, and they're squealing on one another. They form on each other, yeah, it's, uh, it's terrible, it's terrible. <laughs> but you're, it's funny, you're the third guest who's told a, a, a similar story of saying the doctor, you know, scared me that way, and it's a good thing to, to knock I'm it off. Um, you're not a slob, are you really, Jack? Yeah. There, there's <laughs> controversy goes back and forth as to whether or not in real life you, Well, I'll uh, tell you, see, look, I got spot. You can't see, I'm a good slob in that I can hide it. I've, just, I've learned to buy dark clothing. Uh, That's it. Like, I, I, I bought a, on the way home, I had an egg salad sandwich. Yesterday, I was driving from New York, and I had a big splotch went right over here. Well, but you get a little thing, and you rub it, and the pants are dark, and nobody ever sees it. And I, I've learned to live with these kinds of things. Then I get it, and I clean them. I'm not dirty. You know, I'm sloppy. It's a, 
I mean, I There's bathe. A yeah, I bathe in clean water. But I, I, well, that's I, a start. When I get through, the sink is a terrible mess. You see, it's that kind of, it's that kind of a thing. But I'm clean. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. We like the I wouldn't minimum touch. level of cleanliness. Clean. Oh, yeah, he's very clean. Now, do you find, do you, now if you did a serious role like Clash by Night, you did that once, didn't no, you? No, no. Did you ever do that? No. I don't know why, I just picked that out of the air. But I, I like thought it. that was I'm, a play. I'm very, no, the reason I, that, I, I like was surprised was a play that I wanted to do, of course. Anything yeah, about debts I would love to do. Yeah, anyway, uh, if you did some serious drama like that, um, now, would people take it hard right at first? Would they be waiting for the laughs? Uh, is it a if problem? If they did, I'd be very disappointed in myself, and I don't believe so, no. In fact, the picture that I have coming out now is not a heavy picture, but it's... Uh, a lot of drama, you'll see a film clip from it in which there is drama, and I don't think so. I don't think, like you said as I came out, you know, a funny guy, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, for 25 years I've been saying, get over there and move over there, and I play <laughs> nothing but gangsters. I know, I thought of that and as that, I said it, that you were... So then when they called me for the art couple, they said, he's not funny. Yeah. You know, he plays gangsters, and now I've been doing the art couple, they assume mm -hmm. that I'm going to be funny in everything I do. I'm rarely funny. My own kids don't laugh at me, so I'm not really funny. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What would we see a film clip of? I have a, a picture. How do you find I did. time to make a movie with all a series going on? You don't have any time. Well, no, I have a lot of time. As a matter of fact, don't yeah. we have about six months out of the year? That's what makes it so, so it's great. So marvelous. Now Peter Falk is doing. Uh, he's got a series and he's doing a play. He's doing Neil Simon's new play. They're now beginning to arrange it, do them all in the sm smallest amount of time possible. It's better mm -hmm. for them. And it's better for you, you have more time to do a play, and I'd love to do a play, and I, I am really envy Peter. The, the actors aren't kidding when they say they, no matter what, how well their series is going or how well their movies are going, they want to hear well, people sitting out there. Well, it's insurance, yeah. it's, it's insurance, you're then better. And we both get series. out of California so fast, yeah, right? Yeah, we run. The day, the day the shooting is over, you know, like at uh, five o'clock, Zip right to the airport, and he zipped right to the airport, and Tony Randall zipped. It's terrible, you know. We rush, out. we rush out of California. We really, we have to come back here to get refueled and and get char get your battery charged again. Get the good stability. work, whatever good work there is, it's not that much here, unfortunately, anymore. But it's still a lot better than you get out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so we, this is a picture called yeah. "Who Says I Can't Ride a Rainbow." It's Ride a, Rainbow. It's a true story about a a man who had a named Barney Marvitz, who had a little plot of ground on the west side in the village. Mm -hmm. And all the trucks around, but he had a, little, with a lot of animals, ducks and geese and horses and cows, raunchy animals, you know. But, <laughs> but boy, you got to love them. And it was for the ghetto kids. And the kids would come and they'd clean out the barns and they'd ride the horses, they'd take care of the chickens. And it was marvelous to see these kids who might be out stealing hubcaps, going over there and taking care of these animals and the softness in their faces when they get near a horse and, they, and the horse recognizes them and cuddles up to them because they've got a roll in their hand. It's just to see them go out to an animal as they would a fellow human being if given a chance. And that's the whole thing of how they try to chase them off to put a high-rise building there. It's a true story. It's a true all, story. All, and they did. They got, finally got rid of him and he's now in Pelham. So I play Barney Marvitz. Some people play Einstein. I play Barney Marvitz. <laughs> and... Uh, but a very admirable man, and I, I had a good time making it. So you'd like to see? Well, we, we'll see a little of that, won't we? Yes, we'll see. Okay, a we must. Let's take a look now at uh, that scene that, uh, from uh, How to Ride a Rainbow. Who says I can ride a rainbow? Who says I can? I sing it too, by the way. Oh. Eat your heart out, Dixie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot more. I shaved my head, so, I mean, you know, people must be confused because I have, like, three, three heads of hair. <laughs> but they're Is all that, real? None of them are real. Oh, oh. They're all yeah. boss, I, I had to get out of the makeup chair so Jack can get so his hair on. put on. Yes, I know. You, you should see us what? in the makeup room. So we have the same makeup, man. We both work at Paris. Hal Lerley does, he does my makeup in, you should see us in the morning. See, at the crack of dawn, we come in like this. <laughs> Jack gets his hair put on, and Bob Reed, who has eye, white eyelashes, like I do if I don't wear false eyelashes. Mm -hmm. So there, Bob Reed and I in the mirror putting on mascara. He's at America's <laughs> Family. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know whether I put on the crew cut, and there's one that, like, if I let my hair grow as long as it is now, which will be cut soon, I'm able to fake it and push it forward. Yeah. Or I wear my hair piece, which looks like, whew, I'm, which I like very much, by the way. It makes me look a little kind of... It's nice. Well, you know yeah. what? I've been bald ever since I was a kid. 
And now, it's true, I think when I was born, I was born, I think I never got here. <laughs> But you, this no, but you now, now is no, real. no, I all that baloney, you know, oh, yeah, you, if you don't have hair, you look sexy. I like it the way that conventional look when I have a lot of hair, and then I begin to believe it. <laughs> I won't, you know how many times I have gone home from the studio with the hair, and I'm sure some psychiatrists would say that's <laughs> what, because I wish it. I would go home with my hair. Forget to And then I'll go in the mirror at home, it would be a Aww. hotel, and I'll really pass by and believe it's me. I believe it's my hair. And then finally I say, wait a minute, what happened? And I realize it's, I go home with a wig. I've got wigs, I've got And you think it's cuts. your real hair. I want it to be. Yeah. I want it to yeah. be my hair. Well, as a kid, did, did you suffer as a kid from having thin hair? Uh, I mean, did it really bother you? Got, did you worry about it? Did you think I girls would I look younger you? now than I did 30 years ago, 20 years ago. That's the truth. And I was balder then, and somehow it, I just looked sick. You and did, I was hungry. I, I saw you in Gypsy, and I thought you were a lot older. Yeah. Then you really are. I started old and I'm getting younger. <laughs> that's true. You, you sort of now, that sounds funny, but it's true. Found Shangri La and you're getting younger all the time. But everything that we see on top of your head now is your own. Yes, this, well, you so. know, but I see if I show you what's really there, <laughs> it's a lot of covering, you see. <laughs> and I'm not, people, I'm not vain. I believe that Oscar Madison mm -hmm. would wear the wig. It's not me. I'm not vain about it and I never yeah. wear it outside. I would love to have the hair. <laughs> I mean, I Why don't you get those transplants? Didn't he could do that. Joey Bishop had, had a transplant, didn't he? A lot of people. The only way you could get me to do it if you told me Cary Grant had one. <laughs> you know, that's why, why do I want to get one and look like Joey Bishop? You're <laughs> <laughs> right, Cary Grant hasn't lost a single hair in all those years, has he? It's just everything is intact the right there. Up. Yeah. If Arthur he did Godfrey lose them, I'd the pay the ransom to get him, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take a message and we'll be right back and Robert Shaw will be joining us. And stay with us.